All right, I'm seeing us uh, all us little faces pop back on from on the breakout rooms. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chrissy Curran. I'm the Deputy State Historic Preservation Officer and Director of Oregon Heritage. I want to welcome you to the 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Awards presentation. In a typical year, we will be having this presentation as part of a banquet event surrounded by friends and colleagues. Thankful, thankfully, we have these virtual mechanisms to honor these amazing award-winning people, projects, and organizations because frankly, celebrating her heritage successes has never been more important than during these challenging times. Before we get to this year's Heritage Excellence Award winners, we wanted to take a few minutes to address the large scale heroic efforts that took place this year to save lives and preserve heritage resources. The pandemic is an historic event that affected and continues to affect everyone, both professionally and personally. We want to honor and thank all of you for following the orders and guidelines set in place by the governor's office and the Oregon Health Authority. We know that following these orders has resulted in revenue, jobs, projects, and momentum being lost in the institutions that preserve and share Oregon's heritage. Ultimately, your actions have saved and continue to save lives, and for that we honor and thank you. 2020 also saw historic wildfires that affected much of the state with direct damage and indirect damage through smoke and air quality. So many stories touched our hearts and emphasized the value of heritage in the face of disaster, including those of board members celebrating the safety of historical societies while suffering great personal property losses, archaeologists who joined the efforts to locate cremated remains, first responders who worked to save iconic historic structures, and so many more. Thank you to all first responders and community members that participated in the response to and the recovery from those fires. With that being said, let's take some time today to celebrate some amazing heritage efforts with our 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Award winners. I'd like to hand it over now to Chelsea Rose, Chair of the Oregon Heritage Commission. Hi, Chelsea. All right, I'm unmuted, good. All right, thank you, Chrissy. And on behalf of the Oregon Heritage Commission, I would also like to say thank you to everyone for their efforts to keep Oregonians and heritage resources safe over this past year. Let's see. The Oregon Heritage Excellence Award presentation has always been a special moment to honor and celebrate the organizations, people, and projects that have done remarkable heritage work across the state. Over the years, we've celebrated 115 individuals, projects, businesses, and organizations for their outstanding work in preserving Oregon's heritage and telling Oregon's stories. The awardees receive specially made ceramic sculptures crafted by Jeannie Henry of Portland, who always includes something symbolic about the region of Oregon that we're visiting for that year's summit or conference. And Chrissy, if you'll hold one up for everybody to see. <laughs> um, You'll notice the iconic Vista House overlooking the Columbia River, which would have been perfect for if we were in the Dalles like we were supposed to be today. Um, while we're unable to be together in person, um, I'm still so grateful that we have this opportunity to celebrate virtually. This year's award winners will be honored with the debut of a video about that individual organization or project, followed by a live virtual acceptance speech from the award winner. And we'd like to thank the Oregon Historical Society for sponsoring this celebration today. During this period of time, we'll be honoring two award winners with the remaining videos being shown at 3.20 and at 5.30. So let's begin with our first video featuring the award-winning project, the Eugene Lesbian Oral History Project. The Oregon Heritage Commission is pleased to present a 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Award to the Eugene Lesbian Oral History Project. The Eugene Lesbian Oral History Project preserves an important part of discrimination, creativity, and resistance in Oregon that is otherwise lost. 
The large collection of video interviews and transcripts reveal the valuable contributions of the Eugene lesbian community to Oregon's enduring cultural, political, and social innovations. Having this collection online will allow these Oregon-based stories to be heard throughout the state, the nation, and the world. The project makes visible a story of discrimination and resistance with the goal to document the history of the lesbian experience in Eugene and the effect of this community on Oregon history and politics. In the 1970s through the 90s, Eugene was known as a lesbian mecca, drawing women from across the United States. They founded cornerstone organizations central to Eugene's history and influenced Oregon's political landscape. These women worked in collective businesses that were otherwise understood to be in the male domain, ran printing presses, were the leaders of Eugene community service agencies, worked in city and state government positions, and produced and disseminated lesbian culture. Linda Long, curator of manuscripts in the University of Oregon Special Collections and University Archives, and Judith Raskin, professor of women's gender and sexuality studies, have created this ongoing project, interviewing and preserving the stories of older lesbians in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. To date, they have filmed 84 interviews and have collected photographs, journals, diaries, records, and other materials. The interviews reveal new angles on the histories of women, of the counterculture movement in the 1960s and through the 1980s, of feminism, of LGBTQ experience, of sexuality, of intentional communities, and of women's work in male-defined jobs. In the 90s, and the city of Eugene had a new city ordinance that said you could not discriminate, among other things, um, relative to sexual orientation and for housing. And I worked at the housing authority at the time. And I went to this meeting that was a bunch of rental owners in the area and they were discussing it. And I was sitting right there at the table. There was probably a hundred of these people, the rental owners. And there were people up front talking about this new city ordinance and saying, there's ways around it. And they were talking about how to strategize to not have to rent to gays and lesbians. And I'm sitting right there. And one of the things that they said was, somebody said, well, how can you do this? And they said, well, you know, when somebody turns in an application, you can just tell. And I thought, but I'm sitting right here. How can you? Ha. So that was that was life changing for me in that it was devastating. And I remember leaving the room and going off to the bathroom and just sobbing because they're talking about me. They're talking about my friends. They're talking about members of the community who are here contributing. They not only shed light on these histories, but highlight contemporary issues that are relevant to aging lesbians and their communities. Once the interviews were safely preserved and made available on Oregon Digital, a website was created to serve as a landing page to help make the material accessible to researchers, students, and the public. The website also offers a sample of photographs and historical material from the collection that bring the history to life. This was a community-based archival project. In order to reach the interviewees, Linda and Judith needed to prove to their community their skill, respect for this history, and their ability to facilitate the depth and range of their storytelling and earn the trust of the community. All of the interviewees, with the exception of one, allowed their interviews to be made accessible to the public immediately. This project makes visible a specific and vibrant history that is otherwise lost, stands as one of the most extensive lesbian oral history project in the country. Congratulations and thank you to Linda, Judith, and all those involved with preserving and providing access to the stories of the Eugene Lesbian Oral History Project. And here to virtually accept the award is Judith Raskin and Linda Long. Thank you.
Uh, Linda Long and I would like to thank the Oregon Heritage Commission for recognizing the Eugene Lesbian Oral History Project housed at the University of Oregon Special Collections and University Archives. It is really gratifying to have this community celebrated for its contributions to Oregon's cultural and political landscape. As we've been documenting and preserving this unique history, we have had the artist and writer T. Corinne's words in our ears. She said, the lack of a publicly accessible history is a devastating form of oppression. Lesbians face it constantly. Because Special Collections is one important place that LGBTQ history is preserved and, disco and discovered, we are grateful that our work was enthusiastically supported by the deans and staff of the University of Oregon Libraries. We'd like to thank David DeLorenzo, Adrian Lim, Mark Watson, Aaron Stoddard, and the staff of the Library's Digital Service Center. Because we are as committed to access as we are to preservation, we are also grateful that this award will help make the collection more visible to the public. And let me just echo um, Judith's comments, but also add a thank you, especially to Katie Henry, Curry Gill, Chrissy Coran, Chelsea Rose, and the entire commission for this award and your commitment to shining a light and fostering knowledge of Oregon's many histories and communities. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations and what an awesome project. Thank you, Judith and Linda. Um, our next video features the winner of the Sally Donovan Award for Historic Cemetery Preservation, Johnny Edwards. The Oregon Heritage Commission is pleased to present the 2021 Sally Donovan Award for Historic Cemetery Preservation to Johnny Edwards. Johnny Edwards approaches historic cemetery preservation in a holistic fashion, caring about what is above the ground, what is on the ground, and who is below the ground. He shows the utmost respect for those who are buried in the Lafayette and McMinnville Masonic Cemeteries rediscovering their resting places and sharing their stories. Johnny has always been drawn to cemeteries to learn more about his family history. His first introduction to historic cemetery advocacy came after he saw a local cemetery with broken headstones and litter in it. He called his local officials and this led to funding for maintenance. Johnny then joined the Freemasons in 2000 and today he serves as the sexton and caretaker for both the McMinnville Masonic Cemetery and the Lafayette Masonic Cemetery. Johnny's proudest moment was digitally indexing the 1980s type ledgers for the Masonic Cemeteries. When he arrived, the records were in multiple binders and cabinets, and there was no unified system for the plots and no location numbers for the graves. He combined all of the records into one database and made the index available to the public. Johnny also found success engaging volunteers by starting a Facebook page for each of the cemeteries where he advertises work events, raises funds, and shares photos of the improvements made. This has resulted in community members donating their time and money to the projects. His hard work in the cemetery started a waterfall of interest, research, and awareness. For example, while clearing out brambles and vegetation, the headstone of Mr. Corker was found. Johnny mentioned this to a local historian who then shared with him the story of Mr. Corker's murder in the 1880s. The local historian then shared this story with the public, sparking interest and engaging the community. Johnny is an incredibly humble individual and he views what he does as an extension of the obligation to care for others. He takes great personal pride in knowing he is looking after the graves that no one else will care for. Even if a grave is only decorated or visited once a year, he is looking after those graves year round and believes that provides solace to family members. So while Johnny might not see what he does as extraordinary, it is. It is thankless and time consuming, but it is essential for the preservation of the cemeteries. Johnny's efforts extend far beyond the day-to-day -day maintenance. His efforts and outreach engage and educate the community on shared heritage and history. Thank you, Johnny, for your efforts in preserving Oregon's historic cemeteries.
Thank you, Johnny, and congratulations. And he is here to say a few words. I think. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Just, just thank you. I'm very honored. I really don't have much more to say. Um, there's a lot more people that uh, were involved. Other people in the community. Uh, many more. Um, and I, uh, I, uh, I'm very humbled. And thank you. That's it. Well, thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Keep up the great work. So that's just two of the winners. So be sure to join us again at 320 and at 530 to celebrate more award winning projects, organizations and individuals. So now we have a short break, but we're going to be back together to start the collaboration success session promptly at 215. So um, see you then. Um, the next video features the Capels House Museum and Restoration Project. The Oregon Heritage Commission is pleased to present a 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Award to the Capels House Museum Restoration Project. The Capels House Museum Complex is owned and operated by the Oregon State Society Daughters of the American Revolution. The centerpiece of the museum complex is Charles and Lucinda's home, which was built in 1870 on top of Charles' father's 1846 log cabin foundation. This house is listed on the National Register of Historic Places for its association with the broad pattern of development of the community of Columbia City during the late 19th century and for its direct association with the development of healthcare in the community and with the town's first physician, Dr. Charles Caples. The foundation of the house had completely deteriorated and the house was being damaged with unevenness and cracks allowing moisture inside which threatened the artifacts. Dry rot surrounded the house where it was sitting directly on dirt. Lead paint was peeling off in many spots and the front porch was deemed unsafe and it was cordoned off for safety. One of the missions of the DAR is historic preservation and they confronted this restoration challenge head on. They spent five years planning and fundraising in order to complete the restoration work needed for this house they managed to raise $150,000 in addition to receiving an Oregon Heritage Grant for the work. Archiform contractors oversaw the work consisting of lifting the farmhouse over six feet in the air, installing a concrete foundation, repairing electrical work, and lowering the house onto a fern foundation with no damage done. Dry rot was replaced with new siding, loose lead paint was removed, and a new front porch was also built. As one volunteer stated, this is not just a repair and maintenance project. The city of Columbia City, the neighboring elementary school, neighbors and friends were able to watch the project as it grew, learning the history of the Capels family along the way. Each step of the project was photographed and recorded for posterity. The work was completed in time for its 150th anniversary celebration that was sadly canceled due to the pandemic. Members of DAR are excited to welcome back the community and visitors to this piece of Oregon's preserved heritage. Thank you, Daughters of the American Revolution, for spending the time and energy to raise the awareness and funds for this arduous preservation project, and congratulations to everyone involved in the project. Donna Dial to virtually accept this award and to say a few words. Sorry. On behalf of the Oregon State Society Daughters of the American Revolution, I am honored to accept this award. We love Cable's House and would like to acknowledge our wonderful members and community supporters. Without their financial support and volunteer labor, this would not have happened. Volunteers were kept busy packing and unpacking artifacts, spreading gravel, 
lots of cleaning, and even planting new apple trees grafted with scions from the original trees planted over 150 years ago. A special thank is given to the general contractor, Archiform, who specializes in historic restorations. They all helped make this accomplishment possible. Thank you. Thank you, Donna and the Daughters of the American Revolution. Fantastic job. Um, our next award winner video features dedicated volunteer Stephen Grief of, of um, the Coos History Museum. The Oregon Heritage Commission is pleased to present a 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Award to Stephen Greif. Since 1999, Steve Greif has been a board member of the Coos County Historical Society, the operating board of the Coos History Museum. Steve was a key advocate in transforming the Coos History Museum from a small 1950s building to a new spacious building on the Coos Bay waterfront. Today, Steve can be found at the museum several days each week, working on a multitude of projects, including installing exhibits, cataloging photos, leading educational programs for students, or his personal favorite, interacting with visitors and encouraging them to share their own Bay Area history stories. Over his years of volunteering, Steve has provided research assistance to potential authors, movie or TV producers, local business owners, tour guides, and numerous genealogists tracing their families. He also trains many of the museum's new volunteers, and has been a steady presence throughout staff transitions, providing counsel and long-term perspective to new staff members. A lifelong natural teacher, Steve has taught credit-earning history classes at Southwestern Oregon Community College, as well as continuing education courses for both students and adult learners. He can also be found leading history walks throughout the Bay Area. In 2020, during the pandemic, Steve wrote articles for the local newspaper, situating the coronavirus pandemic within the context of local history. He has also advocated for community members' involvement in the writing of their own history during the pandemic. Steve has been a key supporter of efforts to acknowledge Coos Bay's history of racial injustice and the 1902 lynching of Alonzo Tucker. This project has brought together a number of different stakeholders, including the City of Coos Bay, the Coos History Museum, the Equal Justice Initiative, and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, each with their own perspectives and priorities. Steve's participation at the local level has been important to moving the project forward in a productive, meaningful way. All of his behind the scenes work culminated in a community remembrance in February of 2020 when more than 100 people gathered to reflect on the area's past and symbolically collect soil, one for display at the National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Alabama, along with the hundreds of other jars of soil that commemorate lynching sites in America. As a member of the awards review committee commented, it's hard to find a volunteer to do one of these things, let alone all of these things. Congratulations, Steve and thank you for your work in helping to preserve Oregon's heritage. Thank you, Steve, for all your great work, and I apologize for getting your name wrong. Um, and now I'd like to invite you up to virtually accept this award. Thank you very much. I really appreciate what your commission is doing. And I'm very grateful to my Coos County colleagues who nominated me for this Oregon Excellence Award. The preservation of local history has been very important to me. It's been a pleasure working with so many people and collaborating in our community along the way uh, as I enjoy my passion. My love of local history and history in general started with my parents, but I want to credit a great instructor I had at Southwest Oregon Community College named Nathan Douthit and at Bill Robbins at Oregon State. Um, great, great professors and it kept me going and knowing I was doing the right thing. I've also had the pleasure of working alongside so many great volunteers. That's truly been a side benefit of volunteering at our Coos History Museum. 
starting in the year 2000, um, we started fundraising and had to combine a lot of talents to make this building behind me happen. We raised $7 million without ever relying on any tax base of any kind. Some of it came in $5 increments, some of it came in $5,000 increments and more, but it was all worth it. And now the last five years, we've been able to operate this wonderful museum on the Coos Bay waterfront. Uh, we collaborated a lot along the way and are still collaborating. And I wanted to give credit to a number of organizations that have helped us, including the cities of both Coos Bay and North Bend who've been so cooperative to make this happen. They know the value of tourism and they know the value of having your city's heritage uh, kept alive by an organization like ourselves. Also, uh, we work very closely with the Confederated Tribes of the Coos, Lower Umpqua and Sayusla, as well as the Coquille Tribe. They're very active groups and we've, we've formed a really great working relationship. Also, the local Coast Guard has been there whenever we've needed strong bodies to move things. And I can't tell you how much uh, we've relied on the US Coast Guard locally. And uh, across the street from us is the Sun Printing Museum. We've coordinated education programs with them. We work with the Marshfield Pioneer Cemetery and uh, down in Bannon, the Bannon Historical Society has been very cooperative and very, very helpful for us. The rewards for me personally have been to see the involvement and to, uh, of all these volunteers. We have so many wonderful people who come every week to work at the museum. And on one of the mornings I work on Thursdays, I get to meet visitors that come through. And for me, it's just a thrill to have people understand South Coast history and see the smile on their face when they see the exhibits we've prepared. Also, it's been fun working with people who use our resource, research resources. Um, we've had so many books that have been written on local history since this building's been up, uh, as well as newspaper articles and magazine articles. And um, I just love knowing that our history is being uh, expanded because this building is, is in working order. The people on the South Coast obviously love their history. We're gonna celebrate this fall 130 years as a local historical society, which puts us among the top three, I believe in the state for any kind of an historical society. So they've been working here forever and it's, it's been an honor that I've followed in the traditions of those who have started here before me. And I'm proud to know that our local heritage will be preserved in the future because of all, all the collaborative groups here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen, and great work. So that concludes part two of the awards presentation. The final three awards will be featured at 5.30 this evening. The videos will be available for viewing at www.oregonheritage.org following the summit. So explore more collaboration examples beginning at 3.50 and enjoy the rest of your break. All right, so we're back with the uh, final three recipients of the 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Awards. For those of you who missed the first five videos, do not fear, you will be able to view them after the summit wraps up tomorrow at www.oregonheritage.org. So the first video is the Darcel Project. No, no, oh, didn't, uh... Did we switch? Sorry. Yes, we switched to uh, IPRI. Okay. Oh, yes. So the University of Oregon's Institute for Policy, Research, and Engagement. Apologies. <laughs> the Oregon Heritage Commission is pleased to present a 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Award to University of Oregon's Institute for Policy, Research, and Engagement. The Institute for Policy, Research, and Engagement, also known as IPRI, at the University of Oregon is an interdisciplinary institute that assists communities by providing capacity, planning, and technical assistance to help solve local issues and improve the quality of life. IPRI engages students and rare AmeriCorps members in every aspect of their work to support the needs of Oregon communities. While IPRI's mission extends beyond heritage resources, much of the work IPRI engages in is related to heritage resources. 
Between September 2014 and August 2015, IPRI partnered with Travel Oregon, Oregon Main Street, and Pacific Power to document the physical, operational, and financial needs of Oregon's historic theaters and develop recommendations for a statewide support system. This study provided the first ever comprehensive glimpse into the needs of and challenges faced by Oregon's historic theaters. It also served as an important foundational study that led to a National Park Service grant received by the Oregon State Historic Preservation Office to provide financial assistance for historic theater restoration. The Resource Assistance for Rural Environments, or RARE AmeriCorps program run by IPRI, contributes greatly to the revitalization of Oregon's historic Main Street communities. Rare AmeriCorps members placed in rural Main Street communities help boost their capacity to improve local conditions and overall quality of life. In addition to delivering much needed capacity to rural Oregon, the Rare AmeriCorps program strives to build up the next generation of community and economic development professionals. Many Rare AmeriCorps alumni have remained here in Oregon while working on local revitalization and heritage projects. IPRI's most recent contribution to heritage preservation efforts was incredibly timed in its relevance to recent emergency response and recovery efforts due to historic wildfires in Oregon. In 2020, IPRI partnered with the Oregon Heritage Commission and the City of Cottage Grove, an all-star heritage community, to develop a community-wide heritage model resource disaster resilience framework. The project resulted in a detailed guidebook for communities to develop their own resilience plans, instructional videos to accompany the guidebook, and several workshops. IPRI continues to integrate heritage in many of its other projects, such as including heritage resources in parks planning efforts, disaster mitigation efforts in communities, and working with Travel Oregon and destination marketing organizations to promote culture and heritage resources throughout the state. IPRI's consistent emphasis on heritage resources in their endeavors is appreciated by the communities they serve and valued on the state level for their work in moving forward statewide heritage preservation efforts. Thank you IPRI and all of the students and rare AmeriCorps members involved in your programs for your work in heritage preservation and congratulations on this well-deserved award. I'd like to invite Antico Derlich Mulek and Melissa Graciosa to accept the award and say a few words. Thank you so much, Chelsea. That was really cool to see that little video. I hadn't seen it before, but it really takes me back. Um, one of the reasons I think I, I'm speaking to accept the award on our behalf is um, because I've really gone through the whole gambit of what IPRI has to offer. So. I'm going to show you here. I've got my rare AmeriCorps shirt on because I first sort of entered this world through the rare program serving with the city of Pendleton. And after that moved on to doing the graduate program and masters in community, masters of community and regional planning and worked closely with IPRI throughout that whole time when I got to work on the, the historic theaters project. And now who knows how I got here, but I now work for uh, IPRI and get to continue engaging with both our rares and our students. So it is so special and meaningful for me to, to see this work recognized and to have been a part of it through my growth experience because it's really been instrumental in putting me where I am today. I remember um, when Bob first told me that I was going to be working on the historic theaters project, I was sitting in the living room at my grandmother's house and I got the email. I was like, theaters? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is not a planning project. <laughs> but then, you know, since then I've really come to realize how important heritage is and why it's so important that we um, 
involve, you know, the next generation in thinking about that. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to invite Melissa here to sort of speak as well about her experience as a student, because that is, it's so instrumental to what we do is engaging young people in all of the work so that they can continue to go out and do great things. So I'll turn it over to Melissa to say a few words. Thanks, Anika. I just wanna say I'm super grateful to have worked with Oregon Heritage as part of a student team in IPRI's community planning workshop. We worked on piloting the community-wide disaster resilience plan for heritage resources in Cottage Grove, and then drew from that experience to create a comprehensive guidebook for heritage communities across Oregon. So the project itself, I mean, it definitely gave me a lot of opportunities to develop and hone all my technical skills and planning, but really, really underlined the importance of heritage resources in so many ways that I was not aware of before. So whether it's economic drivers, a way of connecting people, and really the resources that hold our history and our memory in place. This project has really encouraged me to continue looking for ways to connect heritage resources and the rest of my nearly finished academic career and uh, my professional career moving forward. So very, very thankful to all of our partners in Cottage Grove and their dedication to stewarding heritage resources and their amazing planner, Amanda Ferguson, to my team who did an amazing job finding our way to be resilient adapting to COVID-19 in the middle of our project. Uh, Emily Connor, M.A. Okotie Oyakon, and Steph Stephanie Tabibian, as well as to the guidance of our project director, Bob Parker, and project manager, Leah Rausch, and of course, Beth Den and Curry Gill at Oregon Heritage. So thank you so much. Thanks to you both and to everybody at IPRI. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, good. And so now I, I think we can uh, show the video featuring the Darcel project. The Oregon Heritage Commission is pleased to present a 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Award to the Darcel project. The Darcel Project is a multi-dimensional project that honors Walter Cole, also known as Darcel, and his achievements as an entrepreneur, veteran, performer, ambassador, activist, celebrity, philanthropist, father, grandfather, costume designer, civic leader, entertainer, and Portland icon. Cole has owned and operated the oldest live cabaret bar in the United States for over 50 years. His story is unique, about the inclusion of a gay icon into the political and social fabric of Portland and the state of Oregon. Still working and performing, this 90-year-old has contributed to positive changes for the LGBTQ community. Cole has been a champion for the marginalized, excluded, and misunderstood. He has been a strong supporter of civil rights for the LGBTQ community for almost 50 years. Through his visibility, unique voice, and indefatigable presence, he has shown the positive and important contributions LGBTQ people have made to the larger community. The Darcel Project was developed by Triangle Productions and led by Donald Horn. Walter Cole's story is told and preserved a variety of ways, including a theater production, an exhibit at the Oregon Historical Society, two National Register listings, placement of street toppers in Portland, a coloring book, a calendar, and several book publications. Together, these provide many opportunities for the public to engage with Walter's story. Other project contributors included Barbara Roberts, Earl Blumenauer, current and past mayors of Portland, and many with direct knowledge of the risks that people took and what it meant to be LGBTQ, especially publicly, in the late 1960s, 1970s, and 80s. The project also resulted in the preservation of a variety of historical information related to this story. The research materials included VHS recording, photos, documents, oral histories, and more. These were digitized and transferred for preservation, and they were compiled into a chronological account of LGBTQ history in Oregon. And many of the costumes from the Oregon Historical Society exhibit, which resulted in one of the largest attendance in recent OHS history, are now part of their permanent collection. 
Sharing Walter's experience is a critical step in bringing to light the stories of a group previously marginalized in Oregon history. Congratulations and thank you to Donald Horn and all those involved with bringing Walter Cole's story to life through the Darcel Project. Book. How exciting. Um, so I'd like to invite Don Horn to virtually accept the award and to say a few words. Yes, there is a coloring book, actually. <laughs> um, I've known Walter Cole Darcel for 30 plus years. I wrote a play about him, and that's how I got to know him. And through the 30 years, I kept asking myself, how can a man put on a dress, sell a ticket, and stay in business longer than most businesses last, right? So I went over to his house one day and said that, and he goes, well, it's because I do it. And, you know, he's honest. He doesn't, he doesn't feel like he's any more, any less, any better than anybody else. And through that, I got to go through his house, his 6,000 square foot home into the attic, into the basement, through his 15 air costumes and found a story that I wanted to tell. And not only Walter's story, but people around him that have made the bouquet a big bouquet. And that was amazing. Everybody from Barbara Roberts, of course, and Terry Bean, but also people that were servers at his club from the very first day that he opened. And what I heard over and over again is he opened the doors and whoever came in was welcome. And that's rare for a business that is known for gay and lesbian, but he always says, we're not a gay bar we're an everybody bar. And he's still, he's mad because he cannot perform on Friday night. I see him every day, so I wanna tell you this. He's mad he can't be on stage on Friday night because they have to be closed. Um, but he, you know, we go for walks every day. You know, we talk every day. Um, he, still, he still wants to work. He still wants to make sure that everything is okay. And I'm very proud of him for that. And this has also made not only the, the Darcel project, we're now doing the umbrella project for the gay history of Oregon. So it's blossomed even more because of him. So I wanna thank everybody who helped me with this. And there's a huge amount of people that helped. And that is everybody from the state of Oregon with Robert um, Oakland and with Brand Brandon um, Spencer Hartley in the city of Portland and Kristen Miner who wrote the, the um, the nominations for me he literally she told me that this is hard to do where you get one nomination a year maybe two maybe you know three or four years we did two nominations in one year and both nominations were accepted one for the house and one for the club and that was a surprise because not a lot of times do you ever get one done and we got two through that we preserved history. And that's what I really hope we all learn through all of this is we preserve the history. History should not be written by a little to be read by a lot. It should be written by many to be shared by everybody. And that really is something I wanna do with this project and other projects. And I wanna say one more thing. I wanna thank this man right here, Darcel. Without his story, this would never have been possible. I really want to thank him. And thank you guys also for giving us this opportunity. This is an amazing thing for a theater company, a small theater company to get this award is truly thankful. So I thank you very, very much. Congratulations, Don, Walter, and to all those involved with that fantastic project. And last, but certainly not least, um, we have the final video featuring, featuring award winner, Bobby Dolp. The Oregon Heritage Commission is pleased to present a 2021 Oregon Heritage Excellence Award to Bobby Dope. Bobby Dope is the founding board chair of the Lord and Shriver Conservancy, the Salem-based steward for the legacy of Elizabeth Lord and Edith Shriver. Lord and Shriver established the first woman-owned landscape architecture firm in the Northwest in 1929 and designed over 200 gardens. As the conservancy work progressed, Bobby led efforts to launch the nonprofit, develop strategic plans to acquire Gaiety Hollow, the home garden and studio of Lord and Shriver, and secured grant funds to hire a garden manager, followed by the first executive director. 
Her volunteer work exceeded expectations of most paid professionals and has consistently been at the highest level. When the Conservancy incorporated as a 501c3 in 2005, Bobby took the lead in building the capacity of the organization. With her leadership, the board negotiated a right of first refusal to purchase Gaiety Hollow. In 2013, that led to a five-year lease option to purchase the property. In addition, Bobby secured competitive grant funds to complete volumes one and two of a cultural landscape report on Gaiety Hollow. Bobby oversaw the preparation of the nomination of Gaiety Hollow to the National Register of Historic Places listed in 2014. In 2015, with Bobby continuing as board chair, the Lord and Shriver Conservancy paid off its lease option to purchase Gaiety Hollow within 18 months. Everything Bobby has done for the Conservancy has been at the highest standard, and she has been adept at forging relationships with garden experts and supporters at national, regional, and local levels. In the 15 years that Bobby has chaired the Lord and Shriver Conservancy Board, the organization has progressed from an all-volunteer operation to one with a well-financed professional staff. The capacity of the Conservancy has increased its volunteer corps of gardeners, its relationship with Deepwood in the city of Salem, and with other garden-focused nonprofits, and the general knowledge of Lord and Shriver as early women landscape architects in the region. Bobby's success as a grant writer and fundraiser has put the Lord and Shriver Conservancy on a solid financial footing and organizational structure. That foundation will now support the development of increased public programs that highlight Lord and Shriver's legacy as an Oregon story, a women's story, and a story about place-based creative work and entrepreneurship. Congratulations, Bobby, and thank you for your work in helping to preserve Oregon's heritage. I'd like to invite Bobby to virtually accept the award and to say a few words. Hi, <laughs> thanks, Chelsea, um, and congratulations to all the other award winners. Um, I want to start my video. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Um, oh, there we go. All right. Uh, thank, thank you for your patience, uh, and congratulations to all the other award winners for their for their uh, their extraordinary projects. It's heartening to learn about the extent and variety of preservation projects in Oregon. This award is certainly for all those people who had the vision, passion, and dedication to make the dream a reality. While, while in Oregon's story, the Lord and Scriver legacy is actually a regional one. I'm grateful for the opportunity that arose when I had the time and energy to vote to devote to it. It's been a challenging and rewarding journey. And as the saying goes, the best is yet to come. And please, I would encourage everybody to come visit the garden at Gaiety Hollow. It's, it's just extraordinary right now, but it's always wonderful. And that was part of their genius was that there was always something of interest in the garden. But right now it's, it's magic. So please check out our website for open, the open garden days and look forward to seeing you there. Thank you and congratulations, Bobby. I bet that garden is beautiful and a COVID friendly activity to do. So folks could check it out. Uh, and I just wanted to give a final congratulations to all seven of the winners of this year's Oregon Heritage Excellence Awards. While we specifically honored seven projects, individuals organ and organizations today, it's critical that you know how much we appreciate all of the work you do as individuals and organizations to pre preserve Oregon's heritage. Each of you play an important part in the work, whether you're a board or a staff member, a volunteer or a professional, and for that, we thank you. So now we invite you to grab a friend and jump into one of the breakout rooms to do some networking and, and share your thoughts on what you heard throughout the day. And we look forward to seeing you all back here tomorrow at 8.30 for some more collaboration conversation. <laughs>